My name is Tom Novacek. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm Associate Medical Director at the hospital and Professor of Orthopedics at the University of Minnesota. Cerebral palsy is a neurological condition and as such it affects the brain. We know that the brain is the main controller of movement and walking. In addition to those primary neurological problems, there are secondary effects in the musculoskeletal system where the muscles and the bones and joints may not grow and develop properly. And as a result, muscles and joints can be tight, uh, bones can be out of alignment, and all of those factors can work together to adversely affect cerebral palsy gait. With the advent of clinical instrumented gait analysis, we have a better understanding of the gait patterns, and particularly with unilateral or hemiplegic cerebral palsy gait. And these are known as uh, types 1, 2, 3, and 4 in order of uh, increasing severity. The mildest forms affect only the ankle, for instance, with the uh, muscles that pull the foot up and they can have a foot drop in swing phase. And in stance phase, the heel can come up early and be what's called minus control. More severe starts to affect the knee. And those problems can affect the hamstrings and the rectus femoris and lead to either crouch gauge or stiffness of the knee in swing phase. And finally, in the most severe forms, the hip is also affected. And in those cases, there can be poor hip extension, or the hip can be held across the midline in what's called adduction. With unilateral cerebral palsy, uh, the neurological condition really dictates the gait pattern. And it tends not to progress over time. So if you have a problem with only at your ankle when you're born, you can tend to only have a problem at your ankle throughout life. Joint subluxation is quite uncommon for children who walk well in the surface. So if we think about the GMFCS rating system and people who walk independently of GMFCS 1 and 2, joint subluxations are really uncommon, with one big exception. That's type 4 hemiplegic cervicals. They are at a significant risk, uh, and the way to detect joint subluxations is with routine x-ray screen.